Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am automotive auditor for the last 17 years. I am doing audit in the industry with respect to IATA 16949. I am again back with a very very interesting topic. What are the different types of attribute control chart that is P and P, C and U. Before going further, it's important to understand that from where it all started. So somewhere in 1920s, Mr. Walter Schwart initiated by making different type of control charts with respect to variable as well as attribute. And the main intent was to improve the quality, to decrease the cost and to improve the productivity. And in general, whenever you talk about all these different kind of chart, it's important that before we are going to plot these charts, we need to have some basic preparatory steps and that includes to establish an environment which is suitable then to define the process to define the characteristic which we are going to monitor then what kind of measurement system will be there how to make sure that there are not unnecessary variations and the process should be able to check and identify all the possible non-conforming things so when we talk now with respect to the key difference between uh, P and P, C and U, so we can categorize them in a pair P and P and C and U. When we talk about P chart, we are talking about proportion of defectives. When we are talking about NP chart, we are talking about process mean. In P chart, we are having variable sample size, but in NP chart, the constant sample size is being used. If we talk about a bit of definition, then in P chart, it is a number of defectives in samples divided by the sample size. But when we talk about NP chart, we are talking about sum of number of defectives divided by total number of samples. Well, when we talk about specifically the difference between P and P and C and U chart. So when we talk about P and NP chart, we are using binomial distribution. When we talk about C and U chart, we are talking about poison distribution. In P and NP chart, we are talking about number of defectives, that is number of non-conforming product. When we are talking about C and U chart, specifically we are talking about number of defects. When we say number of defects, it means to take an example, say there is an assembly line where we are doing a final inspection for the car. So when we talk about number of defectives, we can say that in the entire lot of 1000 cars, there are five cars which are non-conforming. But when we go a little bit deeper into it, then we can say that for all the five non-conforming cars, maybe each car may be having say 20 defects or 15 defects or 40 defects. So we are going a little bit more deeper when we are talking about number of defects and not when we are talking in total uh, about the number of defectives. Now to talk specifically with respect to U and C chart, so broadly the difference is similar as P and NP chart. In U chart, we are talking about defects per sample unit. In C chart, we are talking about the process mean. In U chart, the variable sample size is being used, while in C chart, the constant sample size is being used. When we are talking about U chart, if we talk about with respect to definition, it is number of defects in sample C divided by the sample size. When we talk about C chart, it is sum of number of defects per sample unit divided by the number of samples. So these are the key difference between P and P, U and C chart. Now we talk about some of the key challenges that industry is facing. So the first challenge is that how often the people who are using attribute control chart, they are aware about the difference between P and P, C and U chart. And secondly, why majority of the companies are only using variable control chart and not attribute control chart. So to do a summary, P and NP chart, we are talking about number of defectives that is non-conforming and we are following binomial distribution. When we talk about U and C chart, we are talking about number of defects and poison distribution. My next video will be with respect to the key difference between specification limit and the control limit. I'm regularly getting a lot of feedbacks from your side and they are helping me to understand your expectations. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand this video a little bit more in clarity, if you go below, you'll find a link there. Once you click that, you'll find a blog and that is going to help you to understand more about this particular video. And if you're liking these kind of videos and blogs, 
यू कैन सब्सक्राइब टू माई YouTube चैनल एंड माई वेबसाइट भव्यमंगला डॉट कॉम थैंक यू